I hope CBS and the Big Bang Theory PR people don't get upset that we called Jim Parsons directly. We're not going to get you in trouble, will we, Jim? No, no. I mean, I'm barely here. Deshaun Jackson's agent tried to withhold me, but um, <laughs> I broke free. I, I would take on new management if that were the case. You know, no, I'm here. I'm here. What a nightmare, huh? Well, the only thing that bothers me is yeah. when I, I stick up for my guys when Fritzy's accused of being uh, unprofessional. So. No, you know, Fritzy has my email, he has my home number, he has my cell number, and he has professionally never used it for anything inappropriate. Not yet. Yeah. Well, I mean, that may be lack of interest <laughs> on his part, but he's not used it for anything uh, lurid yet. If there was something that he could use you for with <laughs> Kelly Cuoco, then then I think, or then then I know that he would do that. Kelly Maybe Cuoco. that's true. Maybe yeah. that's true. Uh, no, it's an odd claim. But in, in Hollywood? Yeah. Like, PR people, yeah. agents, who's got the power there? How do you deal with that stuff? Mm. Well, I was thinking, if you ever, because of my relationship with your show, if you ever hear from my PR people to cancel anything that I've scheduled with you, something's very wrong. Like I'm in a hospital somewhere. Um, so it just, I guess it just depends. You know, there are other shows that I have no, most shows I have no connection to at all. Like mm -hmm. I would not even... I guess if I really wanted to, I could try to find a way to get in touch with them personally, like I'd get in touch with Todd or you or whatever. But, uh, but most shows you do have that relationship with. But once you pass on your personal information, it does seem to declare I, I don't mind having a direct connection to you. We don't have to use all the other channels. Um, that's, what's, that's what's strange about it. Uh, and congrats, by the way, on your bracket. Uh, you, you're hanging in there. Yeah, yeah, I'm disappointed now. I, you know, I took Kentucky that far. Like, that was my kind of reach that could, and which worked out enough to keep me in the running. But I didn't, I might as well have gone all the way with it because now I, there's no way I can win. Yeah, you had Florida, Virginia, Arizona, and Kentucky. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, if you had Kentucky going all the way, then. There's a chance that I could pull this whole thing off. But what's funny, you're right, you need to know very little. I went to, <laughs> I went to 538, Nate Silver's site, to yeah. look at his in general predictions. Yeah. And then I, based on that, then I Googled uh, most likely upsets, and I sort of cultivated uh, the average of five different sites, people I didn't even know. I just took their opinions. And. And it really worked out for me. But Nate Silver is a, a kind of a stats geek guy, so he would fit on. He'd be perfect on Big Bang Theory. Yeah, yeah, he definitely would. He'd, well, I trust. I, I, you know, you need that. That he's dealing with the law of averages or whatever, and, and with the with the bracket stuff, that's good to, to have that as your base ground you're building on. But you must reach and take somebody a uh, uh, Cinderella type thing. How do people invite themselves to be on the Big Bang Theory? Without coming out to say, hey, can I, can I come on or get a cameo? Or does an agent reach out to somebody through somebody? Or do you have friends who are actors who ask to be on The Big Bang Theory? No, nobody's ever asked me to be on. But I do think the writers and producers get approached. And I think that sometimes they're really excited when they hear about it. And sometimes they're not sure how they can <laughs> make it work. I'm not asking. I was going to ask, are we getting this? Are no, you no, 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 not at all. I don't, the problem I have is, it's not that no one would listen to me at work. Like if I said, I'd love to have uh, Dan Patrick on. I, the problem is I offer nothing in the way of figuring out what the storyline <laughs> would be. So I feel like there's, it may be somebody would just immediately ding to some miraculous storyline, but they may just look at me like deer in headlights, like, uh, that's lovely. But, but um, what if you had everybody get together and then you use sort of mathematical equations to solve something sports related and then you became the experts and then I got embarrassed by the Big Bang Theory staff. Well, I think that's not a bad idea. Well, wait, if it's not a bad idea, is it a good idea? No, well, here's the problem. I don't ever say, I am not, I don't know what the general public is going to like, Dan. And so, is this a good story idea? It, possibly. I think it's interesting. But did you know Big Bang Theory when you read the script that this no. was going to be an unbelievable hit? No, 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 no. Not at all. No, I liked the character, I, and I liked how he 
talked, and I, I felt like it was something I could do well, and I wanted to play that, but I didn't really know at all. Even while we were making it, like you make like seven or – I can't remember how many we made before we ever aired, and I thought we were doing a good show, but I had no idea if anybody would care. He, uh, and you just signed a, a contract extension, right? I haven't yet, but I think Warner Brothers and CBS did. Uh-oh. Jim, pa- Jim Parsons <laughs> it's holding out. Jim Parsons. It is not worthy of music. Balking. <laughs> He's holding out. No, there's no holding Parson out. Parson says he is the Big Bang Theory. He, wow. I, I, Deshaun's agent's on the other line. <laughs> I really have to go. You're, you're turning into Charlie Sheen. Here we go. <laughs> yes, yeah, I am a walking nightmare on the Warner Brothers lot. <laughs> He's Jim Parsons for the Big Bang Theory joining us, Dan Patrick Show. Were you nervous on Saturday Night Live when you hosted? Yeah, well, they do the dress rehearsal first. Yeah. Like, I have an audience that comes in at eight o'clock, uh, at eight o'clock, and you run the whole show from like eight to ten, and then you have the ten to eleven thirty to get ready for the the live show. And uh, oddly, I was much more nervous for the dress portion of the rehearsal. For one thing, they don't really let you go. You know how when you enter for your opening monologue, you're behind the band and yeah. you come out. They don't let you go behind that door until Saturday, and. I was like, oh, it's a superstition. They were like, no, it's just a thing we do. I was like, oh, okay. And so really the kind of the first time you're back there is right before you do that dress rehearsal. And I, I felt okay. Like I loved all the sketches I was in. I loved – I felt very comfortable with what I was working with. But, it, oh, my God, my stomach. I was like, I'm going to – I could vomit. I could literally vomit. <laughs> And then we got through the dress rehearsal, and I, I, I was, you know, geared up for the live show, but I felt a lot more calm by then. It was like, okay, we've done this. We can get through this. You did know? you drink? No, I don't drink. In fact, I, the only thing I did was make sure to stay caffeinated, because I was like, <laughs> if my brain gets sluggish, I'm screwed. This is not going to go well. He's uh, won two Emmys and nominated twice as well. He's Three, Dan. I've won three. Fritzy. <laughs> I thought we had three in there. No, it says won two Emmys, had enough, nominated enough twice. See, the Deshaun story is getting less mysterious by the minute, isn't it? <laughs> Suddenly, Fritzy is. Where are your Emmys right now? Um, they're sitting in a uh, like a kind of like a officey type room in my house. An officey? It, it's not really an office, but there's like a there's like a, it's sort of a TV den type thing, but it has like a library, like built in bookshelves, and they're sitting on one of them. If I walked into your house. I'd take you right to them. Well, what would I think you did for a living if I didn't know? Oh, that's interesting. I, whoa. <laughs> I have no idea. I really have no idea what you'd think I did. I mean, I'm in L.A., so you'd be like, he's probably in the business. Are you around famous? Do you live in a famous neighborhood? I live in, no, I live in a famous neighborhood. In what way? You like, mean, are like, there famous, famous people? people? Yeah. Um, I think there are a few around me, but it's not like we don't see each other. Well, I haven't seen anybody. Who, most famous person in your neighborhood is who? In my neighborhood? Oh, my God. I don't know. I'll, you know what doesn't shoot far away from here is uh, the Grey's Anatomy. So I, I think, I mean, that show may not be quite as popular as it used to be, but, but so I think a lot of them lived or live around here. So maybe some of the, I don't know. Wait, are these questions tough? Well, I don't. I didn't pick the neighborhood based on the <laughs> neighbors. I mean, other than how the front yards were kept. I I gotta get you into being a uh, a Breaking Bad series. You gotta go, Brian Cranston, and you gotta be a bad guy. I agree. That's your next move, Jim. I I I couldn't agree with you more. I've got a little more time to pull out on this CBS one first, you know, but. But I agree. I think that's the goal. And we've kind of talked about yes. this before. I think that Brian Cranston is like that that guy is like like you say, he's an actor's actor and he lived an actor's actor's life, which is he can he's he's the definition of versatile, you know. And I think that's the goal. I, I really do. What's the show you watch just for the acting? Oh yeah. nothing right now to be honest. And not because it's bad, but it's because I just don't I'm not watching any scripted anything right now. No, I was talking about maybe the Dan Patrick show. I mean, there's acting. <laughs> Jim, work with me here. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, well, you. But people know that. That's one of the few shows I actually turn and in, tune into. <laughs> this is acting. By the here. way, why didn't the show get nominated? Why didn't your show get nominated? I don't know why we haven't gotten nominated. 
Uh, I mean, I was. Uh, you, you're in the category of what? Live, daily, whatever. Something like that. Is it because? Is it because you're a radio show by nature? We're naughty by nature, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. I, this show is the Susan Lucci of daytime regular shows uh, radio on TV. But the way you have to get nominated to be Susan Lucci, don't you? Okay, Jim. Does that, that hurt? hurt? That, I don't mean that. Then that's hurt. a shot. That's a shot. No, it's that's not, a shot. It's not a shot. I just want to be factually correct. If we're going to compare to Susan, okay. The, the you know Susan Lucy's she's a, a, a royalty. Okay, she's royalty. We're, we're sort of arrested development. That people aren't going to get us until we're done. But they did win awards. Oh, they did. I think so. Jason did for sure. Damn man. All right. That's not the point. It doesn't matter. I think you've got a really good <laughs> shot this year. I was looking at the nominees, and, you know, and I've said this before. I love Bob Costas as much as the next guy, but I, let's not just go down the list and go, oh, of course, Bob. Of course, Bob. We've all, we all know Bob. I looked at the list, and I think, I think you're the guy. Uh, Jim Parsons calls Bob Costas overrated. No, I'm not it at sounded, all. Uh, oh, okay. Sounded like that. I I sorry. think that if he had been able to stay <laughs> on the air through the eye stuff, yeah, you, there's no way you could. But he didn't. Do you he realize, had to step down eventually. I got pneumonia on purpose. Is that true? Yeah, I had it for ten days over there. But <laughs> but I got pneumonia. Bob got pink eye, so you know he got the headlines. I, I'm walking around with pneumonia. Right. Nobody sees you with walking. Nobody pneumonia. cared about pneumonia. No. Pink eye, all of a sudden, headlines. Yeah. You know, next time, maybe I do that. Hey, did you enjoy working with um, Tara and Johnny? Yes. Yeah, they were pretty great, weren't they? I thought I thought they were so much fun to be around with yep. the uh, figure skating. And and Johnny and, and Tara, they, they would ask all the time, how are we doing? Like, they didn't know. And I said, Are you serious? Yes. I said, you guys are killing it. And I said, the reason why, it feels like I'm listening to two people who know the sport, who are watching on TV and giving you their honest opinion. That's exactly right. They got a lot of attention because of who they were and the clothes that they'd wear and things like that. But the bottom line was that thing worked because it was some of the most informed commentary you got through the whole Olympics. Yeah. They it, were, was, it was really wonderful. Yeah, it was. Uh, did you go to the Academy Awards? No. Have you ever gone? Mm-mm. You're not going to go until you're nominated? I don't think... I'm. I'm uh, you know, I, as much as some people like me, I really don't think I could just show up. <laughs> well, yeah, you can. <laughs> knock, knock, knock at the Kodak Theater. Okay, why can't you uh, maybe um, hand out an Academy Award? I, well, I don't... I mean, in my career <laughs> right now, I'm mostly known for a TV show, and they just don't frequently have a... a I don't know. I, I need a movie tie-in. You know what I mean? I've done some film, and I will do more. I'm going to have a, a, an animated feature come out next year that I think is really good. And maybe if that were nominated for Best Animated, that would be my – the door might be open, you right. know, All after right. that. All right. Well, I'm just... But, but I, just can't, I just can't go dancing into the Kodak <laughs> Theater, if that's what it's still called. I don't think it is anymore. Uh, when, when do you guys start taping this morning? We're off this week. Oh, you are? Yeah, that's why I'm, I'm here. Oh, nice. All right. Well, we'll uh, hopefully see you in New York soon. I'm hoping. And, uh, you know, tell everybody on the Big Bang Theory, especially the writers and the producers, I was thinking of them. And, uh, I am going to I hope spread they have a your, great your word. Day. I'm going to spread your story. And if somebody with legitimate <laughs> credentials, not myself, is, can pick up on it, we may have something. Tell the grips, the best boys, uh, catering <laughs> people that I, don't I even said know who our best boy is. I don't think we have one. <laughs> you don't have one? I don't think so. I Maybe have, it's me. I have four of them. Yeah, yes, you do. Yes, I do. Yes, you do. Uh, Jim, thanks for joining us Thank as always. Thank you for having me. All right, buddy. Jim All Parsons, right. Big Bang Theory.